Welcome back to this tutorial. In this one, I, I would like to talk about uh, SVM components and have a deep dive in for the SVM to see how it works. Uh, if you look at this picture down below here, you can see that we have our hardware structure and uh, we have our HA pairs and uh, controllers. And on top of the cluster, we have our SVM. And uh, now we know that uh, we have a root volume per SVM, which it serves the namespace uh, mapping for the NAS client's access. And we have a bunch of other resources inside the SVM. So I would like to talk about NAS and SAN differences. And if you're, look, if you're uh, using protocols like uh, NFS or SIFS, you're mostly using a NAS uh, technology, which is a network-based technology. And you are using your network gears for accessing uh, from the clients uh, to the network, uh, to the actual uh, data or, or, or your storage. And if you're using other technology like, like uh, FC and FCOE for the fiber channel, you are using SAN technology and then you need a fiber channel and you need different switches, you, you need fi fabric switches uh, with different ports to access from your clients to your data. Um, if I want to just explain more about this one, uh, imagine that you want to use, um, let's say, uh, NAS technology. So in this case, uh, if this is your storage, imagine that this is my storage and I'm using a NAS technology. Usually we have a point of contact to the storage, which is IP base. I'm talking about NAS right now. So this is IP base. So we have one IP address here as an example, 10, 1, 1, 1. And then on your client side or your host access also, if this is my server, again, I have an IP address here. So this is just all IP based, like 10, 1, 1, 2. Imagine that they're on the same subnet and same VLAN. So then I can hit this IP address directly and I can access my resources inside the storage, whatever is inside the SVM or whatever we have here. So it's just IP based technology. So in the middle, what we have is a network gear or network switch. So we have a network switch. And if I want to explain it better, then uh, we should clean these parts. Oops, my picture is not good. So this is the connection to the storage, to the port. And this is the connection to the server. Imagine this is a switch with four ports. <laughs> so this is just IP base and it's a NAS technology. So we can serve like NFS here. We can use SIFS technology, which is SM based on the SMB, particularly Microsoft. So it's it's all network based. Uh, but on the other hand, if I want to talk about NAS technology, that's a little bit different because let me clean this page. If I talk about NAS right now, is that this is imagine that this is our storage, then we need some specific uh, special port like HPAs. Uh, sorry about my handwriting. This is HPA, and then we need to connect this, which is a fiber channel cable or patch core. We need to connect this one to a specific switch or or as to a switch at which it which it has a specific ports it has an sfps installed on it uh, which we call this layer it's a fabric layer uh, or we, some people call it sand switch sand switch it's not a network switch and then uh, from this guy to your server also you need the fiber channel cable and you need hpa here also so hpa and then this is a different protocol. It's a fiber channel protocol. But anyway, at the end of the day, NetApp storage can serve both SAN and NAS technology. So it can, it has some ports related for, for the network connectivity and it has some ports for the fiber channel FCOE. So it doesn't matter if you want to work with the NAS or SAN. At the very beginning, you need to create a volume inside the, uh, your SVM. So as you can see here, for example, this is just one example. Uh, for a flex volume and you can create a flex volume inside your SVM and then you can use this one let's say for if you use it for NFS 
and for SIFs, then this is a NAS and your client can access through a network through an IP protocol. So if you want to use it for a SAN technology, that's going to be a little bit different. And then you need to create a volume first, which if you look at this one here, uh, this is the volume. And inside the volume, you need to create something called a LAN. So this LAN is like a file. I've always told my student that imagine that the LAN is a file. So a file inside the volume. This is just a file inside the volume. And the difference between NAS and SAN technology is that if you are using a NAS technology, the client is actually sending and receiving the I.O. to the storage and the storage will take care of the rest here. It's like having a file system on the storage side. But if you use the uh, SAN technology like LANs, that's going to be a different. It's like in SCSI disk. And the difference is that this LAN, your client will have access to this LAN and it will send the I.O. directly to this one. It's like managing this LAN directly by the client, not by the storage. It's a little bit different than in terms of, for example, if you want to resize a volume, which is an NFS volume, it's easy. You can just resign it, uh, resize it sorry, on the uh, storage side and the, your clients can see it right away. But in terms of LAN, that's different. It, uh, the difference is that first you need to resize the LAN, which you need to resize the volume first here. And then you have to go to your clients and extend your disk. If it's a Windows machine, you have to go to disk management and just extend the volume, extend the disks and just uh, uh, use it. Uh, so the difference then is that for LANs, the clients and or the hosts are managing it. But for the flex walls, which we are using for NAS technologies, uh, storage is managing it. And uh, the other one that I would like to talk about in this video is uh, is Q-trees also. So Q-trees, sometimes it's a little bit confusing and difficult for some people. I have uh, seen this before, but if you want to understand the Q-tree very easily, imagine that the Q-tree is just a folder. So it's an equivalent of a folder inside a volume. So why we need a folder inside the volume? Maybe we need to apply some quotas, different security style, or some features like opportunistic lock or up locks. Uh, if you need to have these settings, it's a good idea. You can segment your volume with different Q trees, like different folders with different security styles or applying quotas for Controlling, uh, how, controlling how users are react, uh, actually putting their data, how how, how the capacity, uh, how they how they are using the capacities and different stuff, but it's just like a folder inside uh, uh, your volume. And also, if you take a look at the the picture on the uh, right here, uh, from this side. As you can see, we have our volume here. This is our volume, and inside the volume, we have LAN, or you can have Q trees. Then this volume is recited as you know this one from the previous module. So the LAN uh, is inside the volume, Q trees inside the volume, and the the volume is inside an aggregate, which is consists of the RAID groups and consists of disks, and it's reside on the controller. So don't forget about the volumes, LANs, and Q trees. So I would like to talk about uh, lifts, uh, NAS lifts and SAN lifts in the next video and avoid uh, making this video too long. So let's see what we have about the uh, lifts, NAS and SANs.